going to be able to do it. It would be Super Frogs, but let's see. The gates are now open. All right, Windwalker, Lock Shaman, very standard for Super Frogs, but Tempest Storm kind of chooses to pretty much counter cop them with the Outlaw Rogue Elemental Shaman and the Restoration Druids have been pointed playing to his strength, that main class of his right now, and maybe look to try and just out dampen them as well. Just fight fire with fire and see if they can win this bit. Yeah, I'm really excited to see Min Poike is obviously a veteran Restoration Druid, and you'll be the first one today, I oh. believe, to showcase it. We see a lot of pressure on Channel early on from Jamie and Nixie. Nixie now locking down Channel, looking for a swap to Chun Li, catching him in that in between the eyes stun. Ice Fury gets spell locked by Channel. Good denial and good protection from Chanimal to keep Chun Li alive. Now Nixie switching back. He knows the unstable afflictions can't be left open for too long. Indeed, and they're going to be looking for these swaps onto Chun Li. He's not playing that all pressure and relentless, so that's going to allow Nixie to just keep him in those stun lock chains and maybe force out the touch of Karma and then eventually get a kill with that plunder armor. But we need we need to. We need them to get defensive cooldowns as soon as possible. Cubsy used his gateway to get a cap totem out of an in cap, but they killed off the cap totem. And now Minpoike is crowd controlling Cubsy, so it was a good denial of Cubsy's offensive play there. Now Chun Li getting caught in a stun, but immediately healed back up. Cubsy timing those healing waves. Now Nixie getting swapped to. He uses human racial to break out and switch over to Channel, denying that Nether Ward pet of pressure potentially and avoiding a wind shear. So Channel getting locked out. Both teams doing a great job at just shutting each other down as Windwalkers and Outlaws are. They have so much utility. It will be difficult for Channel or Jamie to really get a lot of damage going early on. We see Nixie making a swap. Ice Fury gets Fist of Fury, and I don't think that Nixie will be able to solo Cubsy. He sits through that stun chain quite comfortably. Indeed, he puts that, that Urban Shield time, sneaking it in before the DR stun gets gouged up. Now Nixie looking to just ping back and forth between the healer. A full blind. Now maybe they're going to do a ton of damage on the Chun-Li. He's choosing to sit it. Both of them actually as well. Cubsy sitting through that blind. There's not going to be a follow-up sap though, and Chun-Li gets away with just using that touch of karma. No trinkets used. All right, Chun-Li getting cycloned at low health on that touch of karma. Nice time cyclone from Min Poike. Now Min Poike, though, caught into a paralysis. Cubsy not really in position to cap totem out of it. Nixie getting swapped too, though, a lot of damage. Min Poike denies it with an iron bark, so they switch targets now to Jamie instead, trying to make sure Min Poike is spending the most amount of mana switching his life blooms. We see touch of death available for Chun-Li, but he's caught into a stun. He could trinket and portal away if he absolutely needs to, but he's able to be greedy, sit through that stun. Now Fist of Fury, Nixie away for a few moments. Min Poike looking for a clone. He gets spell locked though. Then they make a swap to Cubsy, catching him in the back line. Wincher on Channel's peels. Cubsy getting bursted down to half. Another stun. Nixie preemptively using his repose to avoid an incoming stun. Not sure if he was able to uh, manage to avoid it, but with that defensive cooldown not available, they could switch to him as an open target. Chun Li getting swapped to. Both teams just switching targets constantly. It's very difficult for both Minpoike and Cubsy to stay ahead of the swaps. Indeed, both teams just keep making those swaps. And I like to commend Chan was on that Inferno stun earlier to just he's just doing an exit drop, healing them when he's not locked out. But now he gets put into his stun. Chun Li using his storm earth and fire as well. Jamie with a nice knock there, gonna deny a lot of that pressure for now. He's still getting chunked down though. Cubsy getting put into that Earth Shock. He's actually got the Earth Shield on himself right now and that's what's going to make Nixie and Jamie pink on a stung onto Nixie now as well. chun -Li trying to get a lot of the pressure. He still has that touch of death as well. He's just waiting for the corners. The Iron Bark did come out from Mpoike so there could be an opportunity relatively soon. Ooh, the Earth Shock stun on Mpoike. They're making a switch to him. Trying to burst him down a bit. chun -Li, though overextended and Nixie's punishing this oh. overextension gouging him at low health but not enough damage to finish him off. Jamie now getting swapped too. He's dipping low. Minpoike struggling, goes for a wild growth with Innervate. Perfect heal timings from Minpoike. There was a lot of big healing for absolutely no cost. Not able to purge it off, unfortunately. So that will allow Minpoike to squeak ahead in mana. But he knows he ultimately gets spell locked. And now Jamie is put behind. Chun Li really raining down a lot of pressure. No Astral Shift. Uh, it's very surprising to not see Astral Shift force in that position, but they're able to be greedy and hold on to it. Indeed, Nixie did an exit and peels that. Vortex on the port. On the channels. He's really low on HP. Use the demonic. Oh, that oh, that 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 oh, that <laughs> the Spirit Link might come out. It gets bashed. He has to use Trinket Link now. That clone might have actually saved Channels. An unbelievable situation. Tempo Storm nearly taking the game. Oh, but they got Cubsy's Trinket, and now they can switch to it potentially, or even maybe a blind later on. Channels is an open target, and Tempo Storm suddenly have a buffet of targets to kill, really. Uh, and right now, it seems to be Channel as the target, just shutting down his pressure and trying to really capitalize on that enemy resolve force. We see him in Point Cannon Paralysis. No follow up, though. He's squeaking his way back to the pillar. To potentially avoid any fears from Channel. Channel repositioning to try and get in line of sight. Min Poike dispelling off dots. Nixie trying to change targets. Chun Li on his back though. They're going after Nixie with no trinket. How much damage do they really have for this Fist of Fury? Not enough to take him down. Iron Bark available if needed for Min Poike. Channel not caught into a stun. 
Any crowd control on Cubsy could be the end of Chenmel, but it doesn't appear to be available. Chenmel has portal now. He needs to be careful to not get Ursula Vortex on his portal. They make a swap to Cubsy. No plunder armor, though. I'm not sure if they have enough damage to really take him down. Doesn't seem to be enough. Stormkeeper gets channeled, but Jamie can't get in line of sight. Great positioning from Cubsy there. I think Nixie just keeps trying to swap off of these nerfs. She's getting as much pressure as possible. But now Jamie taking the brunt of the damage there with that Storm Earth and Fire from Chun-Li. But Chan was gets done, and these outlaw rogue peels is just what's keeping Jamie's alive and makes them hold on to those cooldowns that Chun was dropping very low. He doesn't have the demonic resolve either for quite Nixie. some time. And the trinket as well. Nixie getting low now. The Iron Bark does come out onto Nixie from Employee Kit, so he should be able to survive for now. Yeah, both teams just trading cooldowns and making swaps. That Ursula's Vortex from Employee is MVP. If he can get another one of those within the next minute and 20 seconds, I'm sure Chanimal will end up losing this game. So let's see if Employee can set that Vortex up on the port and get that perfect timing. Cubsy positioned very far away to avoid crowd control. Chanimal dipping low. Jamie dipping low as we've now just set into dampening it will become increasingly more difficult for the healers to heal through this burst we see paralysis fist of fury gets thunderstormed away it's the touch of death they get the cap totem though nice cap totem from cubsy sneaking that in but oh. chun gets peeled away by nixie full fear on minpoike jamie could be in a bit of trouble he trades out astral shift very preemptively there now jamie is a viable kill target if he's not careful Indeed, yeah, no astral shifts, so there's a big opportunity from there. Chan was once again with that Inferno start peeling the team so well. Nixie dropping very low, he gets caught out on his trinket, he gets so low, he has to use that Cloak of Shadows right now. He's gonna have the parry soon as well, and the trinket in around 20 seconds, but well played by Super Frogs, finding pressure in dampening. Nixie making a swap, baits the Earthen Shield Totem from Cubsy. Now he can go onto a different target and maybe look to bait the trinket with a blind. Nixie doing his best to try and be in last. So there's the Ursul's Vortex on Chanimal during that stun. He's not falling for that trap again. He runs out of it, gets pulled back in. Now he can safely portal if he needs to. So the Ursul's Vortex threat is no longer there. We see blind. They swap to Chun-Li. Both players have trinkets. It would be a bit of a throwaway to go down here. They're trying to be greedy, though, with the fear spam from Chanimal. Buys time for Chun-Li to hold on to trinket and trade touch of karma instead as a single cooldown. Mana heavily now in favor of and Poike, as Tempo Storm looked to strangle the Super Frogs. Indeed, Chan was playing excellently defensively, holding on the trinkets of Chun-Li and Cubsy with his defense play. But like you said, Tempo Storm have that huge mana lead. Super Frogs need to find an opening, and they need to find it now. They get the Iron Bark onto Nixie. It looks like they're just trying to gun him down most of the time. The Iron Bark gets used onto him. Jamie doesn't have the Astral Shift for quite some time. No Iron Bark as well. Maybe they can snowball some pressure or look for swaps on the Min Poike, but Jamie's still relatively low. Min Poike has to use his artifact there to top up his healing damage and kicking in further and further in this game. Next to getting feared away as Chun-Li is just pounding away at Jamie, trying to force an astral shift, but not finding it. Chun-Li getting stunned away as Nixie has plunder, but he's waiting to hold on to it. He doesn't have blind to set up a kill. It's going to be very difficult for him to really find an opening. They bait at least the wall from Chun-Li. Potentially, they plunder armor him on the next stun. They're going to swap to Chanimal for now, trying to bait the Earth Shield, potentially switch to him so that it's not on Chun-Li. Stormkeeper gets casted. Jamie setting up for a ton of damage. How is Chanimal going to deal with it? He ducks around the corner, repositioning. Nixie gets stunned as he's overextended. No Iron Bark for eight more seconds. Kenman Poike deal with this stun lock. He gets bursted down half. Not enough damage. Now Chun-Li gets crit hard. Tons of damage flying in from Jamie as well. Chanimal spamming fierce. Good backup from Chanimal. Both these teams with amazing defensive teamwork breaking up these setups quite effectively and extending the game for quite some time. We see almost no mana left for Cubsy though and it's going to get worse and worse for the Frogs. Indeed. The Owlnaw Rogue and the Elemental Shaman just keep swapping off the Earth Shield and it's making it incredibly difficult for Cubsy to keep up with healing and keep up with mana. Even Mimpoikin now. He actually got off a drink and they know that they can win this game in Dampening full stun on the Cubsy. Nixie's trying to pressure him. The Succubus Seduce comes out onto Jamie as well, but it wasn't really too effective. Chan was trying to get some pressure. Jamie with a beautiful wind shit here. They make a swap onto Chani with the gouge on the Cubsy. They're dropping him lower and lower. They do have that touch of karma, like we said, but he is ended up to get it out. And Cubsy actually choosing to sit this blind, and that could potentially leave him to die. And a half sap comes out. Chandi's still low, Chanimal's still low. He has that demonic resolve. He just chooses to gateways away. He's still very low on HP. J they actually get the health zone now. The spell lock on the Mimpoike as well. Chanimal's trying to counter pressure, but Chan Li now getting low. He has nothing. He had to use his trinket for a five rune. And this is looking very bad for Super Frogs. Mimpoike has been doing a good job of just focusing on that long game defense on Resto Drew, but he's been sneaking in for a couple of offensive plays, and it's almost won him the game uh, multiple times. So they need to be aware of that moving into dampening. Another crowd control chain like that could be the end of them, but because they were greedy, Cubsy escapes with his trinket, so he's not an option to swap to, and Nixie hasn't used Plunder Armor for the better part of maybe four minutes. Chanimal gets swapped to, though. A lot of pressure onto him. He uses the Nether Ward to reflect the incoming lava burst. Minpoike is moving in. It looks like they want to finish this. He displaces on top of Cubsy. Cheap shot into potential Whoa. Cyclone. There's Chun-Li caught with no trinket, and Cubsy trinkets drops the 
Spirit Link to save Chun Li on that setup. Now with no trinkets on either player, this could be the end of the match very shortly for the Super Frogs. Indeed, that was the plunder rubber from Nexus there, so Cubsy knowing that. Well, that Hex a trinket and use that Spirit Link. The Hex comes out from Empoy. Jamie actually uses a trinket just to get that dispel off. Jamie dropping low. They do have the defensive cooldowns to survive from each of them right now, so they are looking good. But Cubsy has been on low mana for quite some time. He's been able to keep up with the healing right now, but will he be able to keep up further in this game? I'm, I'm not really sure. Empoy is getting cheeky. They could punish him maybe and swap to him, though, if, if he's not too careful. He's trying to stay on top of Cubsy. They know they can get a Bash Cyclone and a stun on Chun-Li. This, this game is instantly over if they can do that in the next couple of seconds. Midpoint can set up a Nurso's Vortex. He's just positioned away from the Paralysis. Nixie's grab clean hooking in after the double stun, but actually going after Chanimal. I'd, I'd like to see, maybe he's trying to bait Urshield on Chanimal. Midpoint is moving over. Who are they going to initiate the attack on? Tempo Storm have the game in the bag if they can properly execute this crowd control. Chanimal gets stunned up. I mean, Poike is choosing not to move in just yet. He's standing right on the opposite side of the pillar. Nixie's moving over first on. Goes for a blind instead. Blind with no trinket. Oh. Chun Li with nothing left. Chanimal uses on ending resolve to spam fear. Will this spam fear be enough from Chanimal? Great decision from him to trade his own defensive cooldown. Immune the interrupts and spam fear. That's the only thing keeping Chun Li alive. But Cubsy is still crowd controlled, but just long enough for Touch of Karma to come off cooldown. Nice teamwork from Chanimal. And the Chanimal's just been playing absolutely brilliant this game defensively, and it's saved his team time and time again. But they need to find offensive pressure. They need to get a kill because right now Tempest Storm are just pretty much out surviving them, outliving them, and they're gonna take this game very soon if they don't find a kill opportunity. The Iron Bark comes out to Jamie. Now's the time. No Iron Bark, no Astral Shift. They could potentially get a kill onto him with crowd control onto Minpoike. Yeah, or even go after Minpoike. He's, he's been getting aggressive. They can paralysis his leg sweep him out of bear form. Cubs, he's just gonna gate away, maybe look for a drink, but Jamie's already intercepting. Chun Li got left behind. He's choosing not to trink it. This could be a critical mistake. He gets gouged. He needs to get to that gateway as soon as possible and get back to Cubsy. They're so far apart. Hard. Jamie is tearing in as everyone's in the middle of the map. Sky Fury Totem is down. Ice Fury being casted. Chun Li moves over to interrupt and try and deny that pressure. Dampening at 42%. How is Cubsy going to recover? He's got ascendance in eight seconds. He needs that cooldown to top his whole team. We see a defensive oh. succubus play onto Nixie to stall the game out. And Jamie's just rotting down. Now they're actually going to be able to do it. Then Poinkie just spells off the dots. Jamie ducks behind the corner. Chun Li moves in. Jamie goes for a hex. He gets interrupted. Paralysis could be a double stun. Lands the double. Then Poinkie, will he be able to handle this? Astral shift on 10%. And Jamie barely stays alive, but they Back up for a triple fist of fury. It's anyone's game in these final moments. Indeed, Chun Li doing an excellent job offensive there, causing so much havoc. Having Jamie needing to trink an astral shift there, that was huge for them. But they still need to find another kill opportunity right now. 45% dampening. Jamie is still having a hard time getting topped off though right now. It is, is struggling to live. And Chun Li and Chanimals are actually okay for now. Chanimals still doesn't have that demonic resolve. Chun Li gets clone now. They're trying to stabilize. They just swapping pillars just going completely the other side of the room. Chun Li actually pre karma the Earthshock Sun, but now there could be a huge opportunity to take down Chun Li. Cubsy going for a drink as well. He might be able to find it because Jamie is too far. It looks like Nixie is able to stop him, and that could be critical for this game. Chun Li pre portals away when Cubsy got crowd controlled. Really well done, but Chanimal now gets swapped over to. He uses on any resolve to save Chun Li. Now he's got nothing to save himself. Cubsy is the one who needs to be the ringer here with Spirit Link Totem. If Cubsy can just hang on to enough mana, They've got start to rot them down. The damage from Chanimal is starting to sink in at 50% dampening. And Poike will struggle. No cooldowns available. Jamie's in trouble. Caught into the leg sweep. Will Poike be able to power through at the same time? Cubsy sitting through a blind. Both teams getting crowd controlled in these final seconds. Cubsy now into the full staff. Chun Li stunned with no trinket. He needs help. Cubsy trinkets. Will he get there in time? He gets back oh. on the trinket. Oh. Then Poike moving in. MVP play. Tempo Storm take game number one. And Rich, I don't know. I don't know. Can uh, NA do it? All right, all right. You, you got to If you're an NA fan, if you're from NA, you got to be darn proud to be able to say that you got to at least witness that decision making coming out from channels. Absolutely, absolutely insane in the worst possible situations, making the right play every single time, finding some life there. When we thought Cubsy was just going to be out of it for such a long time, we also see Chun Li doing a fantastic job as well. But Tempo Storm in the end are able to get that MVP play, are able to close it out. And Zico, I, I, I'm sorry, I keep seeing out these trinkets, and it's such a beautiful thing to watch. And I mean, Nixie as well is keeping these guys on their toe. You can see here Nixie and Poike behind that pillar, completely just stacking up onto Cubsy. Cubsy, of course, thinking he's going to get swapped to gonna drop that astral shift and Nixie is gonna go for that vanish sheep shot and then the important thing here is to note that Chun-Li is 
out of his trinket right here, out of his touch of karma, and that means that he is going to be a dead man walking if um, anything happens to Cubsy and he gets swapped to, like here. And we can see that uh, that big play here because this is the things that you need to do with an outlaw rogue. We get that big cyclone, then you force out the trinket, and when the healer has to trinket outside of the blind, then that opens up a big, big opportunity later where you can blind up Cubsy into a full sap, and then you can take someone down who doesn't have a trinket, in this case, Chun Li. However, Tanimals managed to save the day with that situation, uses unending resolve, get out a lot of peels, and ultimately stabilize. But still, these kind of plays that Poike are making is definitely the reason why they're doing so well. I mean, here, again, Cubsy trinkets the sap. If there's anything I would like to see is if Superfrogs lose here, I want to see the RLS with Wealthy Man on that rogue. Hey, well, look at what is happening here. It is Tempo Storm right now, the squad that is made of the remnants of the BlizzCon champions, the reigning Blizz con champions against na's last hope to get in the upper portion of the bracket who's going to take ash Maid's fall all right cubsy early on securing hex on nixie with the spell lock and then poiki no decurse from jamie that was a little bit late there on jamie there uh dispelling nixie out nixie's trying to develop some momentum jamie pulling chun li far away from cubsy though nixie moves over stuns him on the gate cubsy pre-gates the stun Nixie's still trying to commit, but he gets paralysis away. That was a nice play from Cubsy. Indeed, Chun Li also using that paralysis on Nixie. Great peels once again from Superworx, but like we said, they need to find that offensive momentum. They need to force cooldowns onto JB, force that Astral Shift, force that Iron Buck, and look to get a kill. But Chun Li getting caught and twist on from Nixie now as well. JB trying to Stormkeeper, gets Spell Lock from Channels, and Channels is always on point with these Spell Locks. Yeah, most certainly. And Minpoke obviously going to be playing very passive. We see him in the far back behind Cubsy's camera. And he could easily look for drinks in this position as well as they're looking to extend the game deeper into Dampany. Chanimal pushing forward. Maybe he wants to try and get some dots on Minpoke. Cubsy's actually trying to cross the map. Jamie punishes him. He immediately has to run away. Indeed. Jamie has been phenomenal in the Elemental Sharp as well. Always punishing Cubsy every time he pushes in. Just earth shocking him and looking for swaps on him or just pretty much destroying him with those lava bursts and the ice throwing. And they do make a swap on the Cubsy. He doesn't have the earth shield on himself. This could be a huge potential go on him. He's choosing not to shrink it. He actually trinkets at the last second and uses that health thing there. But now he doesn't have it for the blind or the plunder armor. Yeah, Nixia, I was wondering why he wasn't committing the plunder, but ultimately it ended up being a nice move because now he's got a huge opening with no trinket for blind and no real answer for plunder as well. Chun Li getting hexed away, dispelled now though. We see Nixie stun, trying to punish him for the overextension. They know Nixie is going to be the one to set up for the kill, so they have to keep pressure on him so he can't have free reign on the map. They're trying to punish Minpoike as well, trying to push him away from any potential Cyclones, and Super Frogs are basically just trying to push Tempo Storm away, stall out the game. Chun Li gets swapped to tons of damage onto him as well. Nixie is still just waiting, ready and waiting for Cubs. There's the blind, there's the stun onto Channel. Channel has Trinket. Nixie is not going to plunder armor. I imagine he's just going to instantly 100-0 Cubsy very soon out of this blind sap. I would love to see. It's going to be really exciting if they can executed properly. Chanimal ports away. Nixie not going for the stun out of the blind. A bit surprising. Now get a hex. There's the stun, but they don't swap. He's got Urshield on himself. They're just going to keep training down Chanimal, but no plunder armor was committed there. They interrupt Chanimal. I feel like Nixie is playing it too patiently with the plunder armor in that situation. I feel like they were trying to force that demonic result, but Chanimal did beautiful cutting. With the pills of Chanimal, they were able to hold on to it. Like I said, now that blind goes to a waste, and that's kind of a win for Super Frogs right now. The gouge on the Cubsy as well. They could make a swap, but he still has that Earth Shield on himself. They need to pressure down Chun Li or Chanimals. Chun Li popping his trigger onto Jamie right now with that Storm Earth of Fire. They make a swap over to Chun Li. Spell lock on the Minpoike as well. It looks like they're getting a lot of pressure on the Chun Li, and now he gets gouged. Every time they swap those Earth Shields, they swap their targets. Yeah, all right. Chanimal caught into a stun, but oh. Chun Li makes a swap to Minpoike. He gets caught out of form. He trades out Bark Skin, and because Chanimal is peeled away, he does not need to trinket that stun. Good awareness from Minpoike. He only trades Bark Skin. He can survive later on. But I like that from Chun Li. I think punishing Minpoike, if he ever tries to make any pushes, is going to be one of the win conditions for their team. Team. Now they're trying to keep some pressure onto Jamie, maybe force an Iron Bark. Nixie really just running around looking for a target. This does appear to be committing to Chun Li, but he pre fortifying brewed this incoming stun, so he's going to reduce a lot of damage on himself. He has to activate that before he's stunned, though, so it was a nice read by Chun Li. It allows Kabzi to safely heal through the damage early on. Jamie getting Fist of Fury by Chun Li. Both teams kind of passive in this position as Chun Li is just shutting down Jamie. Nixie is trying to shut down Chanimal. Both teams are so high caliber, high skill cap. 
in this game. It's, it's the end of Legion. It's the final tournament of the expansion. And you can see, like, each team knows so perfectly how to shut down each other. And that's why this game extends on for such a long time. Indeed. And Charlie's done an excellent job with those pre fortified breeze. He even did it on that Grand Arena as well in Devastating moments. They catch out Poike once again with the Fist of Fury. He does have the cooldowns if needed, but they stun Chun Li. They're looking to get pressure on him right away. And now they make a swap on the Cubsy. He has the Plunder Armor, but it looks like he's not going to need it for now. Trying to force the Trinket. Another half cheap shot comes out. Another stun as well. I believe that was maybe the Hellstone. The Urban Shield Totem comes out now, and it looks like they're going to stabilize due to Chanimal's fears once again. Nixie just never uses his Plunder Armor. He's just trying to bait as much as he can, but I wonder if he would have just killed Cubsy Whoa. through what he had. Now there's a swap onto Chun Li. Still not committing the Plunder Armor. Chun Li did now the oh. Trinket Touch of Karma, so he is a viable kill target moving forward, but there's no blind. So Minpoike has to set up crowd control on Cubsy when Chun Li gets stunned by Nixie. I'd love to see a Displacer Beast bash Cyclone on Cubsy, maybe a Hex on Chanimal. If Tempo Storm can execute this triple crowd control, they can easily take Chun Li down in about the next 30 seconds. Indeed, and Nixie's been so disruptive as well. There was the touch of Death Go, but he just gouges him into a Cyclone, and that completely shuts it down. Jamie is still taking a bit of pressure, dampening his kick and then actually both healers are kind of equal on mana now but Minpoikin might be looking to try and get over no he just blinks in gets a line of sight of his DPS keeps them alive for now Chun-Li using that before if I brew he gets the double stun trying to get a lot of pressure onto Jamie here he really wants to force the defensive but Minpoikin is just using that artifact and it looks like that will be enough to keep him alive for now he's still around half HP though but looks like he'll be okay. oh behind the pillar oh he gets stunned behind the pillar he could just fall that down the vertex on the cubs he's gonna bash him into a cyclone he actually gets the link before the bash that was critical for Chun-Li's survivability right there, but that was a beautiful vortex coming in from Poike as well. That was smart. I mean, Poike snuck across the map without using Displacer Beast. Chun-Li and Chanimal would have almost crushed him right there if he didn't have Displacer Beast to escape away. So I mean, Poike snuck in and had that to get away. That was good awareness by him. He almost set up for victory there by baiting Chun-Li out of line of sight. And, but unfortunately, without getting the kill there, now the Super Frogs are getting more durable. And Jamie's in a bit of trouble, He's dipping low to Chun-Li's pressure. I mean, Poike trying to pick him back up. Really good positioning from both teams. This game, Cubsy getting stunned up behind the pillar, but Jamie can't support him. It's very unlikely that Cubsy takes any real amount of damage in this position without Jamie helping Nixie. He's still keeping some decent pressure. Gouging up Cubsy. Nixie now moving back over to try and continue shutting down Chanimal. We've just mounted into dampening. Mana is actually very even, which is a bit unsuspected. Indeed, that could be very scary for Tempest Storm now as well, because Cubsy's just doing an excellent job with that mana pool. And if the purge has come out at very late dampening, that could just be enough to take down Jamie. It nearly was a Nagran, so we'll see how that goes. He doesn't have Spirit Vling for a while either. He has his trinket, but that's going to be lined up with the blind. Potentially stuns onto Chandi. There's the blind. They're looking to get the Karma from him, but he doesn't need to trinket once again. He gets the touch of Karma off without Cubsy or Chandi using that trinket. That was a nice succubus onto Nixie from Chanimal. It denied a sap out of the blind. Channel with these really clutch decisions to peel for his team. You would normally use that as crowd control on the healer. In that position, he knew a sap would be devastating on Cubsy, so he used it to deny a sap out of the blind. And that kind of awareness and that adaptability is really what the Super oh. Frogs are known for. But we see another swap on a Cubsy. It looks clean with that Earth Shock stun into a Pistol Stun, although the fear gets away. And Minpoike gets caught in midfield, though, as they make a swap to him. I love the punishes on Minpoike. They got a Trinket and a Bark Skin from that attempt. Uh, both teams have to take these risks. I mean, Poiki has to go in for crowd control at some point if they want to hold Chun-Li down long enough to kill him. But at the same time, Minpoike moves in. He's risking his own life. And deeper into dampening, you're not going to recover from a play like that. Indeed. And that's what we wanted from Super Frogs. Those offensive goes on to Minpoike, punishing his offensive play. But right now, he's going down for the drink. And we were just talking about the mana bars being even. And Minpoike is getting a massive lead. He drinks to full. And now this is a dire situation from Super Frogs having to out-mana Restoration Druid that just drank to 100%. Yeah, they were actually very even, but now Cubs is going to be on the back foot for basically the rest of the fight. Oh. Chanimal is taking oh. a ton of damage on any resolve, and Hellstone forced in the same attack. Guess what's available? Plunder armor. Nixie's just waiting. They swapped him in Poiki, but he saw it coming. He was in bear form, ready and waiting. I don't think they're going to catch Minpoike. They can't push and overextend to him. He's just going to be able to see it coming and avoid it. They need to catch him when he's making an aggressive move, which is such a difficult timing. You only have a couple of seconds to do it. And now, right now, with that mana disadvantage, it's going to be even more difficult for them to try and find a way to win. Whoa. Nixie gets caught into the double fist of fury. Both members dipping low. Book of Shadows will protect Nixie, so they switch to Jamie instead, trying to force more cooldowns. 
Chanimal doing his best, trying to just mount up some damage as Dampening starts to ramp up. Essence of Gahanir has been used by Minpoike, so his area of effect healing will be low for quite some time if Chanimal can get the rot pressure going, but he's gotten to a stun. Is he going to be able to portal away? Will he get Vortex on the portal? This next Ursula's Vortex on Chanimal could end the game if Minpoike can set it up. Indeed, they force the Trinket, the Unending Crystal, and that Hellstone from Chanimal. It's all in one go, all at once. He just pretty much pressed all three of them at the same time, and so there could be any moment in this minute now where Chanimal's could fall, but they know that very well, and they're going to keep the Earth Shield on him, so maybe Nyx and Jamie will make those swaps. They stun up Chun-Li and there it is. They're going to do a lot of pressure on him. He has the Trinket Touch of Karma if needed. Jamie gets Spell Lock for now. They're going to survive for now, but once again, Super Frogs could just lose this game on mana. All right, Jamie getting Fist of Fury. Repost was used preemptively from Nixie to avoid that Fist of Fury, so he avoids some little damage right now, but he won't have that defensive later on, and we saw huge damage onto him earlier in the game. Cubsy gates away. He saw Nixie moving over for potentially a swap, so Cubsy's going to reposition, but now Minpoike is right next to him. Minpoike is moving. Oh. He's right, getting ready to bash the Trinket. Minpoike is staying right on top of him. Chan Chanimal gets away, but Cubsy gets bashed on the trinket. Chanimal's got nothing left. Nixie looks to reconnect. He gets stunned up. Clone on to Cubsy. It looks clean. It looks good as Tempo Storm looks at Clay. Oh. Game number two and put the Super Frogs on match point. Match point indeed. Will we see Tempo Storm grab a 3 0 here? Absolutely insane stuff. I mean, Zico. Uh, uh, time and time again, actually getting these deep runs in tournaments, and all of a sudden, he is here and absolutely roaring. Tempo Storm looking to close this one out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is match point. Europe has been dominating this entire tournament and looking to do it again here. They will be all a European affair in the upper bracket if Tempo Storm can sleep, clean sweep Super Frogs right here and now. And Punky Cotton do a kidney shot early on. Wealthy Man looking to try and bait a cooldown, but not finding it. And then immediately switching over to Jamie instead. Jamie, though, on this map can abuse this balcony by jumping down and up on it. We can see a blind trinketed by Min Poike. I'm curious to see if Wealthy Man can punish that trinket earlier on with a swap. But Wealthy Man is the target for now as Nixie looks to try and gun out after him. Indeed, Nixie's just gonna make those swaps onto him and pretty much the same story as the Windward Lock Shop, just make those swaps without the Earth Shield on their targets and look to pressure the full blind onto Cubsy. They make the swap on the channels right now, but Wealthy Man smoke bombs Jamie, trying to get a pressure on him. Wim Poike answering that with the Tranquility. Sap onto Cubsy as well. Channel's still in trouble. He needs to Kai away like a god, and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, really good kiting there by Channel. We see Jamie getting locked out. Stillman Poike with no trinket, but they're keeping pressure on Wealthy Man, and I really like that. They know he's the initiator, so if they can just constantly force him under pressure and retreating away, he can never really set up on Minpoike. We see Kidney Shot on Nixie. Unfortunately, it was a bit DR'd there, so it's not going to be maximum power. And Nixie can just sit through it without even having to trinket. Cubsy is gifts to the Queen, trying to save mana, extend the game, but mana is already not looking too good for him. Will he be able to find a drink? Nixie's on top of him, looking to deny that. Wealthy Man trying to catch Minpoike out of bear form, but it's a bit too obvious right now. Wealthy Man's just marching at Minpoike. They're not forcing him into a position where he has to start healing Jamie and then swapping. They do manage to catch him, but out of line of sight of Chanimal. Chanimal's just trying to move forward. Oh. Maybe this should get a gateway. Wealthy Man, though, gets punished on the overextension. Will he ultimately go down? He's got Cloak of Shadows. He hangs on by a thread, but now Cubsy gets swapped to as he pushes in. He has to Spirit Link as Wealthy Man was cloned at low health, and Wealthy Man's just getting torn apart by Tempo Storm. Indeed, Wealthy Man's aggression just completely backfired with Nixie Swap. They forced the Trinket Ascendance Astral Shift as well as the Spirit Link from Super Frogs. Once again, such a dire situation. Temple Stormer on form, like we said, and they're just looking so dominant. Kidney shot onto Minpoik as well. They're trying to find pressure onto Jamie. He's just doing an excellent job. Kai and Nixie always there with the gouge and the stun, peeling them as well as pressuring room right now. I don't know what Super Frogs can do. They sat Minpoik in now. Wealthy Man gets swapped. He gets stunned behind the pillar, and down he goes. Tempo Storm 3 0 them. Complete EU decimation against NA. Oh, man, first time on the desk and already you get to say complete EU decimation, but it, it really is, to be completely honest, that that is what we've seen. And not only that last game, I'm going to be honest, that last game looked real rough for Super Frogs. They had to change something, though, so not going to hold that against them at all. But then you look at the other side of Tempo Storm, and we just haven't seen them look like this all year. And all, all of a sudden, and not only does it look scary in this tournament, it looks scary for everything. I mean, if you 
are an NA fan right now, you're shaking in your boots. I'm shaking in my boots. I literally changed into boots during that series just so I could shake in them because that's all we can do as NA right now. I, I really think this is a return to form for Tempo Storm because they've been having a rough ride. They managed to finally round out their roster, picking up Jamie before a couple of the cups in the summer season, and they've been sort of trying to find their place in World of Warcraft Arena. The meta kind of shifted without them. They couldn't keep up with the other rogue mages in Europe, but now today, that was the best Tempo Storm storm that we have seen in weeks and oh, if that's yeah. the tempo storm that we see for the rest of the tournament they could be locking themselves a spot to blizzcon and on top of that this is a team too I, i'm not sure about mimpoike in particular but the rest of this squad when i'm here with jamie from tempo storm very impressive performance super frogs was a very hype team moving into this tournament uh is this the result you expected going against them um well they were definitely a team that we were semi worried about. We weren't entirely sure what they were going to play or how they were going to play like all their NA teams. Uh, so war game practice was definitely interesting, but we knew if we just came on stage and played well as our, you know, as LA Rogue, then we would win for sure. Well, you guys definitely had an incredible performance. You know, you joined forces with Minpoike as well as the current BlizzCon champions, Nixie and Alec. Has it, is there any extra pressure knowing that or has it kind of just been business as usual for you? I mean, not really. I mean, it's just kind of chill and it's like a professional, you know, we just like play and practice and there's no, we do as well as we can. There's no need to, you know, get first in every tournament or anything. We just do as we, you know, do as we can. That's a very good attitude to have. Now moving forward in this tournament, are there any teams you're particularly worried about or are you guys pretty confident against everyone? Uh, well, I don't really want to give anything away, but we, we feel like we have a chance against most teams here for sure. That, that's great to hear. Thanks for chatting with me. Back to you, Rich. Oh, he didn't give it.